What's your name, where are you from, and why are you here today? Uh, my name's Jim Busby, and I'm from Shreveport, Louisiana, and I'm in Vegas this weekend for a wedding. A wedding? Who's getting married? My little brother. Oh, well, congratulations. That's exciting. So we're having a little family get-together. All my brothers and sisters that are spread out amongst the country, we're all meeting up in Vegas this weekend for four days of fun and whatever. Because you know what goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas. So you already had the bachelor party? I think we're going to try to do something tonight. They're getting married tomorrow, so. so. Well, I'm glad I caught you before that. There you go. <laughs> That's why I have this in my hand. Now, I couldn't help but notice you're in the Marine Corps, not just from the stupid look on your face, but also from the hat that you're wearing. I'm sorry, that joke never gets old. <laughs> but uh, as, as, what did you do in the military? I was one of the guys that was in the, in the rear with the gear. I was in supply, supply logistics. And in what years? 1979, 1983. So you helped kept, keep the uh, communists out of Cleveland, as uh, Drew Carey would say. Ah, uh, pretty much. All right, pretty right much. On. Yeah. But th that does give you a certain perspective as someone who's put your life on the line for this country, who's volunteered and stepped up to, to oh, be a part of the military, right? Absolutely. I, I come from a, a military family. My dad was a career Navy man, and my brother was in the Army. My oldest brother was in the Army. So we've got basically uh, military in our blood. So, uh, But, yeah, I, I know what it takes, and... and I'm all for anybody that's willing to step up and, and lay their life out for, for this country. And that's why we're the greatest country in the world, because people are willing to do that. So what do you think of Donald Trump's recent uh, attack on Syria? Well, I don't know if it's good or if it's bad, you know, because we've got enough of one mess going on. I don't know, know if we need to get into another. But on the other hand, we don't need dictators just out gassing their people. Well, which mess are you referring to? The one over in Iraq and Afghanistan. I think we've been. <laughs> That's two messes already. What are you talking about? One big one, and I, th I think it's time to get out of there. Well, well, now, now it's now it's got a third node that much bigger. But uh, I, I want to question you about a couple of things on that because you said uh, you know, a dictator who, who gasses his people, right? We had this alleged attack last week where 42 people died. Do you, do you really believe the mainstream media reports on that? No. No. So, so right away you're like, eh, don't don't even believe the premise. And you're already saying, well, maybe it, it, it's justified for the president? I'm going to say, oh, I didn't say that. All I'm going to say is I don't know enough about it. I haven't really looked into it, so I'm really not going to comment on it. That's why I said I don't know if it's good or if it's bad. I don't know. So if, if you were in the military today and you were, you were looking at something like this going, well, this might affect me, or if you, have, if you had kids who were in the military today and you're thinking, you know, this is a policy that might affect me, what do you think would be an appropriate criteria for the American military being involved in another country? I'm going to do what my commander in chief instructs me to do because that's what I sign up for. If I agree with it, maybe I shouldn't be, or if I don't agree with it, maybe I shouldn't be there, maybe I should be. But if I'm in the military, if my commander in chief says that I need to do this, that's what I'm going to do. Well, do you remember what you actually swore an oath to when you enlisted? Mm -hmm. I'll uphold the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So if the president does something that's contrary to the Constitution... You don't know that. And I don't know that. I, again, I don't have all the facts. That's why I really honestly can't comment on it. Well, well we I'm, do actually... I'm just telling you that if I get instructions from my commanders, I'm going to follow them because that's what I signed up for. And that's what I would inspect anybody in the military to do. Well, I, we, knew, we I do know... Agree with it. It's, it's either I agree with it or I don't, but yet I signed up for something, and if I've got a commander-in-chief, that's mutiny if you don't follow his orders. Right, wrong, or indifferent... That's what you signed up for, you know, and if you don't agree with it, then you need to get out. You need to move on. Well, in the case of Syria, we do know that it was at least unconstitutional because it was a military strike without congressional action, I'm right? I'm not going to sit here and argue with you, okay? I'm just telling you the way I would feel. I'm not going to sit here and get into a political discussion with you because I don't know all the facts, just like you don't know all the facts. You know, none of us know all the facts, but yet it's real easy for everybody to interject their own opinion, you know, and I'm just going to let it go with that, okay? So you, I'm good with it. That's it. That's it. I'm good. Do you think the president should get congressional approval as per the Constitution that we swore an oath to when we enlisted? Absolutely. So what should happen when he doesn't? I don't know. I don't know. I think the Congress needs to maybe step up and investigate it. But again, I don't know what's going on. Nobody knows what's going on. We don't know what the facts are. You know, we don't know what's happening in this world right now. Nobody does. You know, the, the media doesn't report on it straight. Congress doesn't investigate it straight. The president doesn't tell the whole story. So. And, and you, you, you can sit here and you can ask me all the questions you want and try to get my opinion. I'm just telling you, if I'm in the, in the Marine Corps and I'm told to do a job, I'm going to do it. If I don't agree with it or whatever, then it's time for me to move on. Right, so and speaking of which, it's time for me to move on. Me, can I ask you one more question? One more question and I'm done. 
I mean, because this is really getting at the heart of it as a Marine, as an American, as someone who cares about this country. I do. Don't, I care about this country a lot. Well, don't you think and that? Again, back to my original statement. If I don't agree with it, you know, that's my opinion. If I don't agree with the, the man that's calling the shots, that's my opinion. But if I'm in the military, you got a chain of command. If that man up, up on the top gives you an order, you're expected to follow it. Don't you think having a nation of unquestioning, obedient order followers is un-American? No. No. That's a liberal thought process. That's why the military is totally different. You, you have people that make decisions, and you have people that are expected to follow those decisions. If you're not willing to follow those decisions, you shouldn't be in the, in the military. That's what the military is all about. You know, you, you get away from the liberal mindset that the man tells you to do something, and you don't agree with it, so you're not going to do it. Well, I'm sorry. That's not what you signed up for. You know, you signed up to defend this country. So, so the founders should have just obeyed King George and, and never had the, the first American Revolution? You see the contradiction there? Well, I appreciate your time, Devil Dog. I hope I, hope I, I challenge you to think a little bit about this. Well, like I said, I, don't, I need to do some more investigating, but I'm done. More investigating is called for. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.